Acute Cyanide Intoxication, A Rare Case of Survival. Yo, what's going on? It's someone that's no one, and welcome back to today's report. Today's report is coming from Jethava D, Gupta P, Kathori S, Rishwani P, and Kumar A, out of the Indian Journal of Anesthesia, Volume 58, Issue 3. When this happened, 2014, the drugs used were cyanide, sodium thiopencil, aminonitrite, and sodium thiosulfate. The route of administration was orally through T for the cyanide, gender, male, age, 30, and the setting, at work in a factory, then brought to the hospital for emergency care. So today, we're finally doing a cyanide report, something that was requested quite a while ago, and I never really got around to it, because I couldn't really find a subjective report like we do for most experiences. And the reason there really isn't any reports like that on cyanide is because it's considered to be extremely deadly, and most people who willingly take it end up doing so in attempts of suicide. An example, Adolf Hitler dosed cyanide when he killed himself. This stuff can be easily absorbed through smoke, the skin, and orally, and when you ingest enough of it, it will fuck you up. Today's report, or case study, will go more into the specifics of how that plays out. But to keep it simple, without medical attention, a person will end up suffocating because oxygen is no longer able to be transported to the blood cells. Death can happen pretty rapidly, from a few minutes to a couple hours, depending on the dose. But this case study does give an objective look at what cyanide poisoning is like for a person, and also the treatment required to handle it. I won't be going into a breakdown either for this. I decided to leave the full case study instead of just bits and pieces too. Why not just have the doctors that were involved break it down, right? We'll get a good understanding of cyanide in this report and what's needed to treat poisoning. Also, another alternative treatment will be looked at in sodium thiopencil. But anyways, I think you guys will find this case study interesting. So without further ado, let's dive right into this. Abstract. A 30-year-old male jewelry factory worker accidentally ingested silver potassium cyanide and was brought to the emergency room in a state of shock and profound metabolic acidosis. This patient was managed hypothetically with use of injection thiopentone sodium intravenously until the antidote was received. Cyanide is a highly cytotoxic poison and it rapidly reacts with the trivalent iron of cytochrome oxidase, thus paralyzing the aerobic respiration. The result is severe lactic acidose, profound shock, and its fatal outcome. The patient dies of cardiorespiratory arrest secondary to dysfunction of the medullary centers. It's rapidly absorbed, symptoms begin few seconds after exposure, and death usually occurs in less than 30 minutes. The average lethal dose for potassium cyanide is about 250 milligrams. We used repeated doses of thiopentone sodium to the antidote kit was finally in our hands, hypothesizing that it contains a thio group similar to the antidote thiosulfate. Moreover, it is an anticonvulsant. We were successful in our attempts and the patient survived, though the specific antidotes could be administered after about an hour. Introduction Cyanide is a highly cytotoxic poison, and its intoxication may be acute or chronic. Acute intoxication is lethal, if not immediately diagnosed and treated within 30 minutes. Mode of poisoning is usually inhalation of smoke, absorption from contaminated skin, accidental oral ingestion is less common. Diagnosis is difficult and usually based on circumstantial evidence. It is mandatory for the emergency department of each hospital as well as the employer to be well equipped with the antidote kit and first aid provision for timely management of such cases. We are reporting a case of acute cyanide intoxication managed with symptomatic support and administration of intravenous thiopentone sodium to the antidote kit was available which took almost 45 to 50 minutes. Case Report A healthy male aged 30 years, working in a jewelry factory, 
was brought to the emergency department approximately 10 minutes after accidental ingestion of cyanide. On a mission, he was in severe shock. He was immediately resuscitated and put on mechanical ventilation. SpO2 did not rise beyond 60% in spite of intermittent positive pressure ventilation with 100% oxygen. Arterial blood gas, ABG report, revealed high anion gap metabolic acidosis. An injection of sodium bicarbonate was given stat and infusion was started. Electrocardiogram, ECG, showed global ST depression pattern with right bundle branch block, RBBB. Meanwhile, the attendants confirmed the substance ingested was silver potassium cyanide used to polish metal plates required for artificial jewelry. The source of poisoning was the beverage, which was kept open nearby, thus unknowingly got contaminated. Its antidotes were not available at any of the nearby pharmacy, and patient was not improving. The patient's attendants were asked to go to the same factory he was working in for seeking the antidote kit. Suddenly, patient started having convulsions, hence injection of diopentone sodium was administered intravenous, IV. To our surprise, patient's SpO2 started improving and reached 90%, then again started falling after 5-7 to seven minutes. We repeated injection diopentone sodium every 10 minutes to maintain SpO2 around 90 to 92 percent. Total dose of 450 milligrams was needed over a period of 45 to 50 minutes. Patient's vitals were stable. There were no convulsions. By this time, attendants were back with the antidote kit. Amino nitrate inhalation was given via endotracheal tube for 15 seconds with intermittent interval of 15 seconds of 100 percent oxygen which was followed by administration of sodium nitrate, 300 milligrams, at 5 milliliters per minute, 10 milliliters, followed by sodium thiosulfate, 12.5 grams, IV stat slowly, 25 milliliters. Patient's condition started stabilizing. SpO2 improved to 96%. Systolic blood pressure, BP, to 100 to 110 mmHg and mean blood pressure to 70 to 80 mmHg, and patient regained consciousness with slight drowsiness. After two hours, ABG was repeated, and there was marked improvement in metabolic acidosis. Repeat ECG showed normal ST segment, but persistence of RBBB. After 24 hours, patient was hemodynamically stable, was given weaning trial, and was extubated. Patient was able to maintain SpO2 100% on oxygen support by mask and was conscious, oriented. He was shifted to ward 48 hours after admission to intensive care unit and sent home after 5 days of admission to hospital. Discussion Cyanide is a rapidly acting and highly toxic chemical and its acute intoxication is fatal. The outcome depends on the dose ingested and the availability of the antidote. Common sources of acute cyanide poisoning include smoke inhalation during the burning of rubber, plastic, silk, etc. Occupational hazards are common in people working in industries such as photography, chemical research, synthetic plastics, metal processing, electroplating, gold and silver industries, jewelry polishing, etc. Cyanide is a highly cytotoxic poison. It rapidly reacts with the trivalent iron of cytochrome oxidase, thus paralyzing the mitochondrial electron transport chain and aerobic respiration. The result is severe lactic acidose, profound shock, and a fatal outcome. The patient dies of cardiorespiratory arrest secondary to dysfunction of the medullary centers. It's rapidly absorbed, symptoms begin a few seconds after exposure, and death usually occurs in less than 30 minutes. The average lethal dose for potassium cyanide is about 250 milligrams. Cyanide poisoning is difficult to detect. The most important clue to diagnosis is the circumstantial evidence rather than the signs or symptoms. A person's breath can smell like bitter almonds, but it isn't easy to detect this and it isn't conclusive. 
Serum cyanide levels, though, difficult to assess, confirmed the diagnosis. In our case, the history given by his co-workers and the symptoms preclude to the diagnosis. The hallmark in the treatment of acute cyanide intoxication is administration of specific antidotes. It's available as a kit, which contains the following. Amino nitrate, sodium nitrate, and sodium thiosulfate. Sodium thiosulfate acts by binding to the mitochondrial enzyme rhodonese, thus facilitating conversion of cyanide to thiocyanide. A newer antidote being used is hydroxocobalamin, which combines with cyanide and forms cyanocobalamin. In animal models, hydroxocobalamin is synergistic with thiosulfates. Although not 100% successful, these antidotes can often prevent the cyanide from further poisoning the victim. Multiple antidotes are available. The most widely used are nitrates with thiosulfate. Due to toxicity of the nitrates, there's always a search for a safer alternative. The recent studies have shown that combination of hydroxocobalamin with thiosulfate is considered a better choice. Although no literature is available regarding use of thiopentone in treatment of cyanide intoxication, we hypothetically used it and could sustain the patient until antidote kit was available. We chose thiopentone because of its anticonvulsant effects, reduced cerebral blood flow, and cerebral metabolic rate of oxygen consumption. Although it contains thiogroup, it isn't similar to the cyanide antidote thiosulfate, as is evident in their chemical structure. Sodium thiosulfate contains a sulfane sulfur moiety, a divalent sulfur bound only to another sulfur moiety, and the availability of such is the rate limiting step in the enzymatic conversion of cyanide to much less toxic and renally excreted thiocyanide by endogenous rhodonese. No such moiety is found in thiopentone sodium. Thus, the mechanism may not be related to the sulfur moiety of thiopentone. It's important to note that cyanide is rapidly acting poison, and once signs and symptoms appear, death ensues within 30 minutes. However, we receive the antidote kit after about 60 minutes. Patient fully recovered and was sent home hale and hearty. Conclusion Control of convulsions with thiopentone can have a role in sustaining victims of acute cyanide intoxication until the antidote arrives. Employees working in at-risk industries using cyanide must be informed of the hazards from exposure to the contaminants and should be trained in appropriate procedure in handling the cyanide. Antidote kit should always be available at the place of cyanide exposure and should be sent to the emergency department along with the patient.